Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome to a slightly different video uh, today. I'm going to do a historical build. I don't do them that often. Um, uh, the last one I did was the Sharnhorst. And I have tried to do the King George V class before. Uh, pos possibly one of my favourite ships um, in real life. Um, and I don't ever do um, an equivalent um, build for in game normally because um, the game punishes you for the KG5's mm, unusual um, main armament layout um, where you know you've got a twin gun and quad guns but I'm going to try and faithful, faithfully recreate her um, as best I can now um, I've said before when doing historical builds um, displacement is an issue um, the reason for that is um, normally you'll find um, you know displacement and things like that you know King George V class you know they'll say oh it was 36,000 tons you need to go for the um, <laughs> the deep load the maximum load um, the maximum displacement that you possibly can now for uh, KG5, that was around about 43,000 uh, tons. Um, in fact, it was 42,923. But the chances of me getting that... Ah, oh, that's pretty close. 42,910. So, very much the lightest modern battleship one. Um, just like KG5, she has the... Well, it's not quite a flat front. But it's close. Okay. Um, she, of course, had 10 14 inch guns. Um, now that tower doesn't fit, this one does. And she was using the this kind of tower setup. Now, the question is whether I'm going to have the space on this hull at this size to do it. But I'll try my very, very best. Um, she then had, uh, so forward, she had a twin 14 inch and a quad 14 inch. And then on the back, she had another 14 inch gun. Secondary guns, uh, she had 16. So eight each side of the five inch dual purpose guns, which should fit nicely. And then she had a bunch of the um, uh, quad, uh, what are they called? Pom poms, um, which I will attempt to replicate with just some two inch. So I'll just put two inch guns all over it for um, the purposes of replicating her AA battery. Not quite what she would have had, but close enough so I think that does actually look pretty close um, the question is if we can get the rest of the ship built out so I'm going to start with the armor scheme again I recommend that you do try this if you are doing um, historical builds because normally and when you're designing ships in Ultimate Admiral you'll do this at the end um, but it makes a lot more, more sense to do it like this so the main belt was 14.7 the lower belt, which I'm going to use as the belt extended, was 5.4. Uh, deck was pretty thick at 5.9. But the even the extended deck was 4.9. So pretty well protected deck. Uh, turrets were near as maximum difference, 12.8 inches. Um, and the tower had only four inches of armor. Um, turret tops doesn't tell me um, because that's not a thing, but uh, I'm going to say that they should be six inch, uh, 5.9, same as the uh, same as the main deck armor. It's usually a good guide and that should be pretty much it. Now, in terms of uh, funnels and things. Um, she had two. 
Uh, she had one. Mm, yeah, she had one forward and one aft. And the aft one was definitely this one with the balcony. And the four one, I think, was a different style. Yeah, it didn't have didn't have the balcony on it. So might go for what's our smoke interference? Currently twenty. I'm gonna go for the tall funnel three. Does that look about right? That looks about right. So that they're almost mm, they're not quite the same height. That one's too big. Yeah, we'll go for the three. So trying my best to replicate the look as well as the the functionality of the ship. Now, of course, we're at eighty seven percent of our weight. We've got a little bit of an half weight offset, but not much. Um the only question is, I think the medium barbet looks looks wrong to me because um, it didn't flare out like that. So I'm actually going to put a standard there. And I know that will increase my weight, but I think it's not 12 inch. Yes, that looks much closer to what her her front barbet looked like. Um. Okay. Um, the barrels were a little closer together on her twin turret, but otherwise I think we're we're pretty close. Put a little bit of half weight offset, so I'm just going to move a turret forward. Oh, perfectly balanced. Amazing stuff. Now, um, I'm going to give her the best quality armor, because that is appropriate. Um, in terms of um, sensors and stuff, she definitely did have radar. Um, so I'll give her the Gen 2 gunnery radar, and I'll give her some the good range finders as well. Uh, range, speed, etc. So she was could, she could do 28 knots, um, and she had a range of about 15,000. So I'm going to set it to long. Um, in terms of propulsion, she had geared steam turbines, so we'll go for the geared turbines too. And she used oil. Um, we've got 100% engine efficiency, we don't need to fiddle around with the boilers. Um, in game terms, she probably did have auxiliary engines, I just don't know which type. I think they're auxiliary diesels on the KG5. Um, machinery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. So, let's give them a Turtle Electric Drive 1. Uh, because I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that in the ships that were under construction, they talked about getting rid of the Turbo Electric Drive and replacing it with a diesel after Prince of Wales got hit by torpedoes on a stern and it disabled the turbo electric drive. Um, I give her an advanced shaft two. Um, again, there was talk of him. They didn't have this, the super good ones because super good ones. They didn't have the best tech tech. I don't think because again, Prince of Wales took torpedo hits on her, um, on her rear. And uh, that, that's what caused the problems. Now, uh, I'm going to go for maximum barbet thickness. Um, I think that's appropriate given the fact that the barbettes were well armed as the, ta the um, turrets themselves. Torpedo protection, um, not five, because famously they didn't have... Um, <laughs> famously, you know, uh, Prince of Wales did have issues with her torpedo layer. But it was considered very good for the time. Um, so I'm going to go for Torpedo 4. And a double bottom hull. Um, doo -doo. And I think... Reinforced bulkheads one again, not the best, and anti flood. Mm. 
Yes. Two. Citadel. Um, I think... Um, probably... Uh, actually, I'm not sure. I'll tell you what, I'm going to check and I'll come back to you on that one. Okay. Um, it's debatable, but I think um, the all-or-nothing armor scheme is, uh, is about right. Um, the protection of the ships was considered to be very, very good. So that's what we're going to go with. It does push me almost up to my weight limit, though. Um, shell types. I know the British were fans of cordite, but yuck. It's just, it's just bad. <laughs> so um, I'm going to put in two powder. Um, reload, pretty sure, was considered to be semi-automatic at the time. Um, it would be nice to get the balance hydraulics, but I don't think I can afford it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just standard bulk kids. Not going to go for anything crazy there. Uh, she probably did have a hydrophone. Definitely will have a radio. Um, but I'm all, already struggling for displacement. So I'm going to leave that out. And um, here we go, 42,742 tons. We go to very long range for that, no. Um, so I think that's pretty close to what she looked like and her, um, her armament, her protection. I think that's pretty close. I think that is pretty close indeed. And if I were into kind of the same way that the more famous pictures of her are, I think that looks pretty darn close. Okay, uh, let's see how she does. Germans have brought, oh, they've actually brought a big ship for once. change. Only the AI brings something terrible when you do these uh, oh I want to test them out fights. Yeah that definitely looks like it enjoys the fifth class. In terms of how they would fare in the campaign, it's pretty maneuverable, it's pretty good speed, protection is decent. Obviously I'm not a fan of this gun setup but that's more the fault of Ultimate Admiral than um, <laughs> the KG-5. Um, Cost-wise, she's just under 100 million, which is a pretty good price uh, for a modern battleship, I have to say. You definitely see a ship like this being useful in the campaign. Um, I just, just... Purely in game terms, I wouldn't have this, this turret arrangement. Um, because, yeah, the, they shouldn't, but the twin guns only have 200 rounds of ammunition because they have a totally different ammunition stock. Um, uh, enemy inside, there we go. What are we dealing with? Pretty big ship with some pretty large guns, I think. Uh, 19 inch guns, yep, that's bigger, right? Okay, I wasn't expecting to go up against an H class. The, the AI never produces H class ships. Well, they've decided to today, apparently. Switch to save because this. The other problem that I'm going to get with um, this layout is that I'm going to get the target log bug over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Try and get a good angle. 
that's the extract with it. I've tucked the extract quite tight into the ship. Maybe a mistake, maybe I should put it a bit further back. Because our attack angle is not the best. The 14 inch guns lose target lock almost straight away. They just waste all their ammunition. Frick. And of course, um, they don't fire unified salvos either. Turn the twin turret off to stop it doing that target lock. Uh, error. I would like to see that bug addressed. Please, devs, it takes up a lot of micromanagement. Basically, every other salvo you have to. Order the ship to retarget, which is really irritating. Then you'll misclick. Actually, is getting there. Keep doing that much better. If it would actually stay on target on the thringa. It's got a hit, but. Didn't do very much. We have a 19 inch tube powder. Interesting. Heavy shells. Standard bulk, it's 125,000 tons. 195 million each. Armor is mm, pretty good, actually. type of ship that uh, KG-5 was designed to go up against. In any way. <laughs> um, you know, she was designed to take on, well, Bismarck-style ships. Not this. German ship is quite slow compared to us, of course.
So you can hit from an 8 inch gun there. Nothing. This is minus 409%, we'll get it minus 0%. And it will stay like that. Indefinitely. You'll, you'll never, it'll never come back because of that huge, weird negative. And you could have 40% chance to hit. And it will do it, no matter the range. focusing on anything you know, important I'm focused exclusively on watching those numbers. Again, this is the issue with this layout and why you don't see me using it. Um, because a single twin like this is. Oh, big hits there. Not really causing much damage in the general. You blew up the two inch. in him, but it's not super effective, because we effectively only have eight guns firing. Not dissimilar, ow, oh, that was a big hit. That was a big hit. A series of two of them. Three. Just taking multiple hits. She's taking 16 hits off those 19-inch guns. Thuringen has taken... 58 from the 14s. Yeah, that's too much for Not a badge. I mean, I like the ship. <laughs> but um, it shows the issues with replicating this style of shipping game. You can definitely do it. Um, but uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't quite live up to how the ship would would perform i think oops if um if these guns shared an ammunition storage that would help a lot and if you didn't get that target lock bug with basically because i was firing two guns and i was firing eight separately um like yeah if, if you were going for this style of design in ultimate Admiral, you'd be better off um, with to, if you were wanting to replicate the performance of the ship, I reckon if you went for the three three triple gut turrets instead of the two quads and the twin, um, you lose a barrel um, of firepower. But um, I think that would that would replicate your um, the, the how the ship would perform in-game compared to history a bit better but obviously it doesn't look right anyway hope you enjoyed that one um something a little bit different today and um thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again soon for some more ultimate admiral dreadnoughts bye bye